Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Department Podcast, the wrestling recap version of the Department Podcast, where myself, Stephen Clark, along with Jesse Norman and Justin Valentopic, are here to break down everything from outside the ring and inside the ring from this week in wrestling. But before we get to all that nonsense, fellas, how you doing today? Good, you know, nice, nice weekend as usual. Yeah. Getting getting out of work for two days is always good. Uh, a little, little rainy, but ah. yeah, chilling. Yeah, yeah, you have some nice plans tonight, Justin. Going yeah. see some lights. Well, it's anniversary with you know the girlfriend, so yeah. you know with COVID, not not much you can do. So we're. If Don't sound familiar, too thrilled about it. Well, in, in Jersey, you know, the PNC Art Center, which is a concert place, they basically yes. have drive through lights, which they've been doing for a while. So we're just doing that for seven years. Perfect. Perfect. It's it's like you said, Justin, it's safe. It's nice. A little holiday spirit in there. Fun time yeah. with your girlfriend. That's awesome. Jesse, how you doing? Doing pretty good. Can't complain too much. Good. That's nice. It's I know pretty you foggy. Talk, it, it's very foggy. I know you're talking about Madden a little bit earlier. We were talking offline about it, but um, it's rough out there. Madden. I started, I started six and two. I'm at six and seven. Yeah, that happened. Five to straight. Me. That happened to me Five too. Five straight like, sweats. I got to my ten wins, and then I went. On, I was trying to oh, see if I can get thirteen or sixteen wins. I went on like a Never five or sixteen losing streak. Uh, it's bad. It's bad. Madden fiction. Hit my ten, and I'm done. This. Smart. That's honestly smart. It's it's a stress, but I don't, I don't even. Guys... I don't even touch weekend league until yeah, because they... you lost two solo battle games. That's well, too. or well, no. <laughs> I'm qualified. Thanks. Oh, no. Um. What, what it, happened this week in solo battles, Justin? The the punt glitch. Oh yeah, yeah. me over. <laughs> punt glitch got you against um, the computer. Yeah. yeah, so I don't want to talk about it. But <laughs> until they they fix the speed a little bit and tune that up, I'm not touching online. Or at least ranked. Also, Makes I'd like sense. to play more than the same person twice, which we ran into quite frequently on KO because that's the only playable mode online. Yeah, no one wants to play squads. That is true. So Madden, if you're watching or listening, fix your damn game. But this is not about Madden. This podcast is about wrestling. Before we get in the ring, we always start outside the ring. And some news that kind of broke early this week. Um, Goldberg made an appearance on WWE's network show, The Bump, and kind of hinted at a match with Roman Reigns. Um, this match was originally planned for last year's Mania, but Roman backed out because of COVID and stuff. And it looks like they're trying to build it up towards Mania this year again. So, fellas, what do you think of this? If, if they're it build- should be Rock. It should be Rock, well, Roman. I don't want Goldberg Roman at WrestleMania. Goldberg Roman at Mania? No, no, no. Not I good. agree. But here's the thing. It seems like because of COVID, they're going to be like they're giving Mania to Tampa, right, to honor that contract. Yes. So they're kind of going to be doing WrestleMania from this past year, but there, and they're probably going to put off Hollywood to next year where we'll probably get rock Roman. And because this year, this year at WrestleMania, they'll probably be, even though it's in Florida and they don't care, there'll be some form of crowd restrictions this year to some degree, even with a vaccine on the horizon. But then hopefully by next year, they can have a full SoFi stadium in LA. And that's where they put rock Roman. Yeah, Je- Jesse, I'm um, I'm with you on this one. I I don't. I don't want, want it either. I'll just, I don't just want it either. put it on like put it on Rumble. Put it on. Yeah. Put it on there put, or something. Put it on like, SummerSlam. I'm, SummerSlam's fine. Yeah, no, I'm not fully against Roman Goldberg, but I don't want it at Mania. Absolutely not. Yeah, but um, Justin, you brought up a good point with the whole WrestleMania coming back to Tampa again. So are they just going to use like the same logo and just like, kind of make the I think it'll be show? similar. Yeah, that's ridiculous. They're not going to try. They're not going to try half as hard. It's like yeah, copy and paste. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like they're yeah. just trying to like retcon and be like WrestleMania this past year didn't happen. You know, it's just like WrestleMania this past year was good. No, I know, but they're gonna try. Mm-hmm. They're just gonna be like, "Well, this wasn't the full WrestleMania experience, but this one is." I'm you know? calling it right now. There's not gonna be a single match on this next WrestleMania card that's gonna compete with the Firefly Funhouse match or the Boneyard match. I can 100 percent agree with that, but um, I I, I agree with both of you guys in this situation. I don't want Goldberg. He he comes, he shows up, he wins a title, loses it a month later, and just leaves again. It's I know it's in his contract, and I know that's what he's paid to do, but the ship has sailed with Goldberg. It was cool when he came back against Brock and beat Brock in a minute or whatever the hell that was, and then he won the title against Owens, and Brock won it back. That's fine. That's cool. He mm-hmm. stayed for a little bit, did his time, but 
coming back every year since 2016, 2017, whenever the hell, whenever that was, it, it's too much, and we're just sick of him. And it, we've been teased Do about Goldberg Rock. Roman in the next Saudi show. Do Goldberg Roman yeah. next Saudi show? Fine. The Saudis fine. Saudis love Goldberg. They they do love Goldberg, but like like if once we're teased with the Rock and we're teased with Big E and all that stuff, it's just enough. Like I like you, they had our hopes up with all this teasing going on, and then this is what they're going to give us. But anyways. imagine if Goldberg beats Roman. Oh, it, that'd be bad. That'd be because because you want to be like he's absolutely not, but also Goldberg wasn't wasn't going to be the fiend. Remember, we all said there's no and way he, he beats did. the fiend. And then he did. Is he also a, crushed Brock in that first match. So. What if this isn't a title match by then? If Roman loses oh. it somehow, oh. who does Roman lose the belt to? Jay. Oh, we'll, we'll get to my, we'll get to the only team. way is if Goldberg if they if they make Goldberg cost Roman the belt and then do like the whole Brock Goldberg storyline from Mania all those years oh, ago. It's kind of reverse of the Owens KO thing. Goldberg helps Owens win the title instead of like kind of beating him for the title ish. But we'll get the TLC predictions next week. I don't think I don't think they'd pull that trigger yet. I don't no. think it'd be TLC. I think they would they'd wait to do it till like Chamber or Rumble. Rumble. Yeah I'd Roman's say. too hot. Oh my god, what if Goldberg wins the Rumble? Ooh. Don't say that. Don't say that. I don't want. He's I don't want. Into I, existence. I don't Goldberg's never. Of... Goldberg's never won a rumble. No, he's, he's only never won a rumble. Nope, nope. One let's, rumble. Let's, he's uh, only been in one. That's. This is too much painful. Yeah. Uh, much let, let's let's though. We're to branch away from this. That is a rumored match for WrestleMania, but there are a couple other rumored matches which I am very very excited about for this year. And one of them that came out was a rematch between Edge and Orton. Uh, don't think the title will be on the line because. It looks like another title match is there, but the title match is the one I really want to talk about. And that is WWE champion Drew McIntyre versus Brock Lesnar versus Keith Lee in a triple threat match. Is the current rumor for probably the main event, I would guess, of WrestleMania. And it, it, the way this match is set up, it looks really good for... So does that mean Keith Brock comes back and wins, and wins the Rumble too? I think it's Keith Lee winning the Rumble. But then and Brock just work- comes back and said, I lost the title. Brock just comes back and says he wants the thing. And they're like, okay. But then here, here's my thing. Would Paul Heyman then pull double duty? No. I think he'd, he'd stay with Roman. I think he'd stay with Roman too. Yeah, I think he's kind of done with Brock. Brock can say a couple words and beat up people. He doesn't I, need them. I don't know if I believe this just because I don't know if Brock's going to come back. That is true. These are rumors. Yeah. This is I not think he's, yeah. I think he's happily done for a, until he needs money again. Which Which is, we'll never need too. money again. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if that but, is the case for WrestleMania main event, give me it. That's awesome. That's an awesome match. Um, yeah. Um, I hope I hope they wouldn't just put Lee in there to eat the pin because I think Lee is a superstar um, in the making that they could really build up, and I hope they do. Uh, I think he's the right choice as of right now to win the Rumble. I don't think there's another person really comparatively that could like win the Rumble. Justin, yeah. you're, you're a dick, but um, <laughs> anyways... <laughs> The people don't understand this. They're just, uh, Justin, I hate you. Um, just messing up my whole thing here. But anyways, yeah, no, I agree. Keith Lee winning the Rumble would be great. Triple threat, fantastic. Um, rumors for right now, don't get your hopes up because they're already scrapping, it looks like. Um, Roman and Rock, so whatever. But in other news, the Thunderdome is moving to the Tropicana Field now. Justin, I know, sent me a couple pictures the other day of how the setup looks. And it looks like it's just the Thunderdome that was in the Amway Center and just moved to Tropicana Field. Yeah, it's still the size of, like, an arena. Like, at least the setup, like, the digital boards. Mm -hmm. Like, it didn't get bigger. It's the same thing, but you assume Tropicana is going to be their home until March, like late, mid to late March when the Rays have to get back in there for baseball. Yeah. And then at that point, WWE would probably hope to get the show back on the road to, to some capacity. Um, you know, if they do want to get people in there, they can obviously make it bigger since it's a baseball field rather than a basketball arena. Yeah. Even though the capacity isn't that actually much bigger uh, no. for Tropicana to the Amway Center, just because Tropicana is a miserable, miserable stadium horrible, for horrible. it's the, it's the worst stadium slash field or anything for in all of North American professional sports. I will testify to that. I've been there twice. It is terrible. I've been there too. I believe once. It is the worst spot for yep. a baseball game. 
The yeah. roof is cool. Like when it starts pouring and then you just look up and you're yeah, like, oh, no. it's not, it's not Baseball a rain shouldn't be played in, in Florida. Just. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Just quite frankly. I agree. But, uh, but yeah, no, cool. cool. They're, 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 they keep moving the, the arenas, but like they all kind of look the same, but they look cool. So yeah, fun. no, it looks cool. It looks fun. Whatever. Cool. Good for them. Like you said, Justin, though, they'll probably have to move out and pack up pretty soon in a couple months because of baseball starting up. But that we'll get to that when that happens. And lastly, the little last bit of news I got this week is WWE is sending down their bigger men to the PC for quote unquote improvement on their in-ring talent. These guys clu- include Otis, AJ Styles, this guy, Omos. Keith Lee, I think, was one of them. Daba Kato or something. I just think that's disrespectful. I really do. It, it, they're a different breed of wrestlers, and they're not going to be this high-flying guy, this very athletic guy. They're going to do what they do, and I just thought that was kind of disrespectful to Keith Lee and Otis and guys who are making names for themselves of what they can do just with their own God-given talent and not trying to change them. But I just wanted to throw that in. No, you're not wrong. It's just I, I wonder- think it's – do you think they're trying to have him like slim down almost? Like get him like extra so. work, workout I in? So. Yeah. I, I don't think Vince wants anybody to slim down except for the bigger guys. That's all it is. He wants mm. not like he doesn't want Braun to slim down. He doesn't want like he wants like Keith Lee to slim down. The guys who are here. But the thing I exactly the guy the thing I think is funny is they have Drew Gulak training him, or they have Drew Gulak and, and Adam Pierce overseeing all of this and everything. And that's that's great. And all Drew Gulak is a great wrestler. Yeah. When has WWE ever even cared about Drew Gulak being a good wrestler? Like they they are acknowledging here that he's, he's a good. good wrestler. That they they're acknowledging trust- that he has so much talent, but they're like, oh no, we're never giving this guy like any actual time. Remember when he had the Daniel Bryan storyline, and then like that was yeah. kind of just withered right. away. I I just. Very Drew Gulak's been given a real disservice, but yeah, no, this is this is Vince telling guys to lose weight without lose weight. telling them to lose weight. Um, yeah. I don't. What can you be unhappy with with Keith Lee them. in the ring? Literally, like, but like Keith Keith Lee especially because this man literally does flips. Like, what what do you want? What do you want him to do instead? Lose I don't weight. understand. <laughs> yeah, he's. He, oh, God. It, it's sad it's sad like that, that's the way they are they made their careers just the way they are otis is a funny fat blue collar working guy and people love him for that and he, he can move in the ring too he's a big dude he's like a he's a really he's really like a brick otis honestly he's just solid he has no neck stock. he doesn't have a neck that's true but like you said jesse keith lee is just he's talented as it is he doesn't need to lose the weight if, if vince wants him to maybe get he can't even get more athletic he's very athletic as it is but anyways no need to the dead horse with that anymore let's get into the regular week of wrestling and we start off always with monday night raw and there wasn't too many notable things that happened on as raw as, it wasn't a bad show by any means it was actually pretty decent it was just nothing newsworthy happened kind of like the nfl episode last week like there was something yeah, the games didn't really move the needle exactly it just didn't do anything it was it, they were good they were fine but it just didn't do anything but um, the best thing going on Monday Night Raw is the or- or- Orange Orton and Fiend storyline, and um, it, it's just good. It, it was Orton versus Funhouse Bray on Raw. Lights go out, Fiend appears, cool stuff. Um, there's apparently a field trip to the Thunderdome going on on Raw next week. The Bray's gonna bring all these puppets out, I think, and all that. So it, it's it, I'm glad the title's not in this. Um, I'm, I know you guys like it too, but there's not much to talk about here. It's just good it's good stuff i don't know where this is gonna end that's the thing that's what we can talk about honestly where you guys think this is gonna end up but i don't know yeah i mean because like i think it's gotta end with feet maybe maybe they do one of those cinematic um, matches and uh matches with with like on the at the wyatt compound or whatever Mm. i think i think that's what they kind of have to do the story is just like Uh, have bring randy back to where he burned down where he burned down the house yeah, honestly. Where he killed Sister Abigail. Yeah, I, I guess. It's just, I, I, I don't know. A lot of stuff on Raw is like, where are they going with this? Because another thing is the whole Drew McIntyre and Sheamus storyline. 
They lost a two-on-three handicap match to AJ Styles, Miz, and Morrison this week. Then they get in a brawl backstage, like, all right, finally, we're going to run the McIntyre Sheamus program after AJ is done. And then all of a sudden, they make up, and then they just go out and, like, get beers or something like that. I think that's how it ended. And it's just like, what's, what, what's, what's the point? Like, I'm all in for a McIntyre Sheamus feud, two vets that have been around for 10 years plus, two foreigners who have grown up with each other. It's just... Do, do, like I need more. I need more. Like I lo- like long term booking, but I need a little bit more. Well, and it's so weird because it's supposed to be Drew AJ at TLC. Yeah, but like they're not building to that. No, like it's gonna be like. Don't get me wrong. It's gonna be a good match. There's gonna be absolutely no build to it, but it's gonna be a really good match. And I feel like that's kind of what WWE's even saying is like, hey, yeah. um, we put a, we're going to do Drew AJ because like Drew and AJ are going to do really good, but we're actually focused more on this long-term story of Sheamus and Drew, which I I mean, sure, they're both, you know, Irish or Scottish or whatever. So yeah. they like they like to stick together and Sheamus brought him back a sword or whatever. Um, <laughs> and I don't know. It's 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 just it's time filler, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's well, so, and it's yeah. it's like they're setting up. I mean, if they're setting up for Rumble of Sheamus versus Drew, why not just wait? That's fine, but like nobody really cares about the the matches on Rumble anyway. Besides the two Rumble matches, so you can do Drew Sheamus and nobody will care if it's a ten minute match. But you don't need to build two months out for it. No, you, you don't. You don't. It, it's it's just a lot. It's it's a lot, but it's a little at the same time. It's it's whack. Raw is whack. Um, I don't know if you guys watched. Wait, 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 whack, yo. Th- there you go, Justin. Um, I don't know if you guys watched. If you have anything else from Raw no. that stood out to you, but that's all no. I got. Um, tag team's cool. Uh, the I think the Hurt Business might win the titles next week or something. They're going against New Day. That's cool. Um, the women's division consists of Lana still. I was about to say the women's division was uh, weak as God, always. It's not very good. No, it's but... not very good. So have they have they announced that Oscar Lana versus Jax Baszler for TLC for for TLC is Oscar doing double duty or is that just Oscar's only match? Okay, just the tag they're going to win then. I think they're yeah. going to win too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. Lana's going to become a world champion. Lana's, Lana's going to be a champion. Lana's going to be a world. She might hold both at the same time, too. Who knows? But uh, stop. Oh, stop. Boy. Oh, no. You never know. Um, they should, they'll for, probably um, drop them pretty quick, but they'll still yeah. get it. Yeah. They'll yeah. Have them. Um, that, that does it for Raw. Whatever. Cool. 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 That, that's, the, that, that's the general feeling of Raw. I feel like every single week. Yeah. And it's just that was it, Raw. Cool. Cool. All right. it, it's hard to do this show because like I like talking about stuff that are like very notable things to happen and NXT is usually the top one for things to happen Smackdown usually pretty good they repeat some stuff but usually some stuff comes out of Smackdown raw nothing comes out of it every single week but let's get into better things the best night of the week for wrestling Wednesday nights NXT and last week we did not get to do a takeover war games reactions video because some stuff fell through and all that stuff but we are going to talk a little bit about it now and we'll just talk about um the main event first of all we'll go to Justin about this one and see how he liked this match that lasted 45 minutes it was a long match it was undisputed era versus McAfee and friends and man it, it was fun Pat put his body on the line and I just really really enjoyed this match uh Pat literally busted his ass it looked like at one point not just because he was you know going giving it his all and everything he literally did a flip and no one caught him and it was pure tailbone <laughs> straight onto the canvas no and one caught him th- they didn't catch the Nobody bottom half him. of they caught his shoulders but not the rest of the part that would hit mm-hmm. harder right away um no it was really good it was a typical, you know, undisputed era war games match. You knew what you're going to get. You knew you're going to get, all right, the first two kind of a normal match. Second one, you know, they bring in a little something. And then by the end of it, everyone's bringing in weapons and then it's just all mayhem at that point. And it was really good. And, you know, era one. And that's kind of what I thought was going to, well, I didn't think it was going to happen. I wanted Pat and pals to win, but <laughs> it makes sense. Pat's going to go away for a while. Hopefully not really. I want him back. I miss him already. <laughs> um, no, I enjoyed it. 
Yeah, no, Jesse, did you enjoy it too? Yeah, no, it was it was good. It was it was a good match. Um, it was good for Era to get their win. I think. Yeah. Um, Got back on track. I, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was good. I think this definitely means Undisputed Era is sticking around again. Um, They're not going anywhere. Maybe I think... doing another. Maybe doing another Gold Rush for the title. Trying, not going to get it, but maybe trying I, to get. I think back. another gold rush will happen but everybody will be holding different titles like i feel like either kyle or roderick strong's gonna hold the world title at least once in the year of 2021 and it might not be january February, march april it might be somewhere in the summer it might be in the fall but i think roddy is bound to have a world title run because he's very talented and i think it'd be a lot of fun or kyle for that matter too bobby's kind of old he can just jump in another tag team with one bobby will be another tag team yeah, yeah. bobby and cole the uh tag belts bobby and cole the tag bobby belts. and cole would be good yeah perfect perfect and then give kyle and roddy the two singles titles i like that but no great match the women's war games match was phenomenal as well um, yeah i think i enjoyed it more this year than last year because last year was the whole candace uh, not candace dakota turning on tegan thing and that's kind had of... uh eo shrai jumping off the cage with a trash can yeah that was so good shots oh and one of Tank One of the too. most underrated ones when I can't remember who did it, but when they, I think it might've been Dakota jumped off the top rope. I think EO was in the trash can and she like double stomps on her. Yeah. Double stomped her with the trash can on the, the head. The trash can was so bent. Like they couldn't get EO out. They couldn't get EO <laughs> out. It, 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 I think it was EO and Dakota. You're right. But no, that was a very cool spot. I, it, it, like that's, what's good with NXT. You see different spots and stuff like that. You don't see on a week to week basis. Like, it was just so much fun, um, and we'll talk about her in a little this late woman in a little bit. But Raquel Gonzalez pinned Io He's Shirai. A star, it, it, He's a, star a star in the making, literally a star in the making. And um, we'll talk to her about her in a little bit because she main evented another NXT episode this week. They're building her up quick, and I love it. Um, but other matches quickly in the night where Loomis defeated Grimes in the strap match. It was entertaining. That was fine. I thought that match was fine. It kind of it underwhelmed me a little bit because oh. I kind of thought it was going to be better. But also that happens on war games matches. It does, yeah, of course. It, like what you said before about the rumble, like no one really cares about the other matches on mm-hmm. war games other than the war game matches. Exactly. Yeah, um, that's why they didn't even bother putting Balor on no. because they were like nobody's going to care. So smart. don't even need to let him rest up more. That's smart. Yeah. Um, Champa defeated Thatcher. Pretty good match. Honestly, if you watch it back, I, I watched it over again. Like I didn't enjoy it the first time through, but watching it over, not a bad match. I'm not a Thatcher fan. I'm not fan. a big fan of Thatcher fan. I'm not Neither a big Thatcher guy. Neither am I. But, but, it, but it's, it, I, what's Champa doing? Like uh, I, I, we all kind of thought he was going to lose. Yeah. Like this was like, oh, they've really been building Thatcher up with these big, uh, big matches. But yeah, no, you're right. Weird, weird big match outcome. Thatch. Big match Thatch. Couldn't get big it done. Match big match Thatch. I like that, though. And in kind of a shock-ish of the night, Gargano got back his um, North American title and revealed his ghost face partner to be Austin Theory. It was me, Austin. It was me all along. Um, looks like Leon Ruff is back to training in the Performance Center, probably. I think he has a match in NXT next week, but he's not going to be in the title picture anytime soon. It was a nice soon. little moment. Like the, like the story was like yeah. a nice little I enjoyed you know. it I know we had Ryan on a week ago or whatever and he didn't really enjoy the story but I, I, I liked the story that they did with Leon Ruff it was different. it's kind of like on episodes of like a TV show where you're like you'll have like your overarching story throughout the whole season and then you'll have like the one episode that stands alone it's like it's own thing yeah that was like the Leon that was like yeah. this part of the North American title where it's like it's own little thing okay cool they did it bye yeah exactly um but now Gargano won back the title and he has his little stable now with his wife, Indy Hartwell and Austin Theory. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Maybe Isn't it called like The Way or something? The Way, The Gargano Way. The yeah. Way, The Gargano Way. I love it. Um, I can see a, a, like the, t- the tag teams in NXT have improved since they got all the guys from the UK back. I can see Gargano and Austin Theory winning tag titles eventually too, mm-hmm. and adding to that. But um, that does it for TakeOver. Let's just get into the week of NXT right now. And the title picture is very busy at the moment, but news broke a couple hours ago that there is a number one contenders match next week between Pete Dunne and Kyle O'Reilly to see who will verse Finn Balor at NXT. New Year's Evil is on a Wednesday. It's not a TakeOver. It's like the Halloween Havoc type show. Um, who, who's winning and who's facing um, Balor at uh, New Year's Evil? I feel like it'll be Pete Dunne just because 
O'Reilly has had his match, you know, didn't win it, but just give yeah. Pete Dunne something. I agree. No, I, I agree too. I think it's Pete Dunne too. And that's, that's a, that's a money match right there. That's a takeover. That's a takeover event. match. Yeah. That's and a takeover put, main event mm-hmm. match. But I, you know, with cross coming back, I feel like we won't see a conclusion to that match at all. Yeah. I, like, mm, I don't think yeah. we'll see a takeover ending. I, yeah. Uh, Jesse, you agree with the Pete Dunne winning, first of all? I think so. Um, Beating O'Reilly, not the title. Dunn looked, Dunn. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah. I think, I think Dunn um, looked great in the War Games match, obviously. Um, I, I'm interested to see where they're going to go with him. Um, mm-hmm. Because it's, he, he's interesting because he's been in NXT for a while, but he was also in NXT UK. So there's still a lot that he can do on the NXT roster, but it's also like he could get called up. Um, so we'll see. Uh, they also have been building Kyle O'Reilly pretty well, though. Yeah, so. they have they have been. Um, but the reason I put busy NXT title pitcher in the rundown was because at that point in time, uh, Damian Priest came out at one point, but then uh, we saw later in the show that he was attacked by a returning Karrion Cross, who kind of like a little, little different look to Karrion Cross in a way. Kind of like they humanized him. I feel like in a way he wasn't like kind of like this like the devil, like the Satan type guy. He had like he had the leather jacket on. He had like a nice collar like shirt. A, he looked like a, like a biker. Well, not like a biker, kind of like, American badass Crayer. <laughs> Honestly, wrong. yeah. But no, I think like this a, stuff. Like yeah. a bounty hunter, maybe. That's it. Oh, I think bounty that's hunter it. carrying cross. Bounty hunter carrying cross. Um, don't let Vince hear that. He's gonna call him up and give him that gimmick right now. But um, I think this leads to carrying beating Finn for the title. Um, oh, absolutely. Whenever the next takeover. Whenever the before, next takeover. I'm gonna say before the WrestleMania takeover and then Finn bringing out the demon to beat Karrion Cross and get the title back. And that sends Karrion up to the main roster or something. When was the last time we seen the demon? I feel like it I was Mania 35 is the last time I it was. It's been a while. It's, it's been, been a while. It's been over a year. It's because he hasn't yeah. used one since his return to NXT. And I th- mm-hmm. think it might, was all oh, the fiend, the fiend. Was it, no, he came out as Finn as the fiend. Uh, so came I out think, as Finn. Yeah, because we all we all wanted him we to all come wanted, out. Yeah, I think it was but, against Bobby but Lashley. We don't get what we want. Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania 35. That's my guess. Wow, it, it's been a while. So I think C- Carrie and bringing out the demon just makes perfect sense. And uh, it says the last time WWE's universe got a glimpse of Finn Balor as the Demon King was in 2019. The Demon King beat Andrade in an Intercontinental Championship match at WWE Super Showdown. Oh, oh. Super Showdown. Oh, show, Super Showdown. That, <laughs> super, that doesn't if, count. If, if we don't count that, then the uh, 2018 against... No, 19. WrestleMania. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, cool. Still, that's uh, still been a while. We're almost. Yeah, it's, that's, it's been a it's while. Be like two they years be, at that and, point. They, and they used to be whipping it out like every other month. Back they, in. Yeah, yeah they were whip, They they were getting uh, pretty bold with it. Yeah. So it was like every takeover. But, um, it was how can they dress them up now? Yeah, but no, I'm all for a cross and um, Finn feud. Scarlet hinted at it um, with Finn on the entrance ramp, and of course, Cross is back too now, so we can actually start talking about it. So that's fun. And the last bit of news, I teased it during the War Games thing, is the star. uh, Tease (laughs) is the new star that is made on NXT, and that is Raquel Gonzalez, who had a big win over former NXT champion Ember Moon. So she pinned Io on Sunday. Pinned Ember, both of them. Well, not clean, I guess, on Sunday, but clean on Wednesday. Pinned Ember Moon. That she she's gonna win the title. She's gonna win. Yeah, she's next woman up. She should. Yeah. Yeah. No, she should. She's she's a. Like I said, she's a star. Yeah, no, um, she's a, she is a star, and it's a stacked women's division, and she stands out because of her height and her physical appearance, and how muscular and how talented she is in the ring. I'm I'm a huge fan of Raquel. Um, she's Boy, invented. The- just think, if she was blonde, she'd have 14 title reigns by now. <laughs> not, <laughs> not not wrong True. there. Um, no, it, I I don't. I don't want her to turn on Dakota Kai and like no. turn face, no. but I want no. her to turn on Dakota Kai and stay heel. I want her to mm-hmm. just be like, I don't need you at all. I don't yeah. need anybody. I am the best female wrestler in NXT. 
And I don't want any, like what I want her to be like, when I win the title, I don't want it to be because of anybody else because I don't need anybody else. Yeah, no, I agree too. She will only works as a heel just because of how her presence is and how tall and big she is. Um, I feel like this yeah. is kind of what but I they think. Want. I think that way you can maybe build Dakota back as a face because the Dakota Kai heel turn was good, but it's also it's been a year, it, it's and I think it's course. kind of ran its course. Yeah, I'm um, putting her back with Tegan then, honestly too. When Tegan gets back from her knee injury, then you have another women's tag team to move up to the main roster. That's another not up there. Yeah, Ten months. Honestly, yeah. you're not wrong. She had another knee surgery, so yeah. Uh, but Raquel, fantastic. Um, can, can we pound through SmackDown quick? Or? Yeah, we can. Probably. We can pound through SmackDown quick. Get this done. Uh, we have seven minutes quick on the recording. Uh, Profits versus the Dirty Dogs next week. Ugh. Um, sick of them. Yeah. Ziggler and Rude, sick of those two. Um, but they, they were probably- a tag team. They stopped being a tag team, and then they started being a tag team again. Weird, weird, weird. But they might win the titles next week against the Profits, which scares me. In t- in 2020, almost 2021, that the Dolph Ziggler's relevant is insane. I think um, I don't think they're gonna win. I think they are building up, and we can talk about this because this also happened on SmackDown. Gable and Otis is what I think is going to be the next tag champs. That they beat Cesaro so, and Nakamura. So, so uh, they did, yeah, and they it's did. it's so stupid because Otis was in a tag team, of course, with Tucker. They broke them up just to put him in another tag team with Chad Gable. Well, it's the tag team of failed, not failed, but like partners that didn't work out. Tucker and Jordan, who got hurt. I yeah. mean, hey, don't don't get me wrong. Uh, Gable is better than Tucker. Oh, I agree. <sighs> It'll but, be a better team. But, that to us. Yeah. Can you but heavy Gable? machinery was a better thing, sort of. Can you picture Gable and... walking out in like the jean vest and like a trucker hat? No, I don't. Oh want God. It. But um, uh, it's it's cool, I guess. Whatever. I don't know. I'm confused with that stuff, but whatever. Uh, Big E's been on a roll lately. He has a new theme that's performed by Wale, so that's kind of cool. Um, Big E's kind of embracing the singles role now, and it looks like he's going after Sami Zayn. Like he lost by countout on SmackDown to Sami, but. That that that's it's just continuing the feud. That's fine. Biggie winning the IC. He's title. gonna win. It's fine. He's yeah. Win the title. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's a good start to be back on your singles run. It's perfect. No, exactly. Like, you know, and you know, you know the Intercontinental Belt is always a good one as a platform to build off of. Better than the U.S. for sure. That, exactly. That, that, oh yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Um, let's go to Owens and Reigns because this was good again. Of course, Roman Reigns doing good stuff what else is new um owens was in the ring cutting a promo and basically jay uso just came out and attacked him and then owens attacked jay and then owens went backstage and, and reigns cut a nice little promo on the camera saying that he puts the food on owens's family's table now and like he's the head of their table and you better tell daddy to smarten up before he faces me at tlc he's the head so. of all the tables i like it roman's getting personal Ro- roman's getting personal all right basically um, roman's just a waiter well that's the best story to tell with kevin owens <laughs> Yeah, because he's the family. Because Owens is always Owens always been, even though you know he was sort of the heel and wasn't really the family guy. But yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, we can we can forget that. You... But no, this feud's fantastic. Um, we will have a TLC prediction episode next week, so we'll discuss what's gonna happen there. I'll probably have a different result than you guys to that ending, but you know, a little bias. It's not gonna happen. I, I I've been thinking of. I think they're I, I think they're implementing Jay into this very well. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think they're doing a very good job and with the J storyline. He has a big part of how that match is going to end for me. But, but yeah, guys, I don't wait till next week. I'll just tickle in the ball a little bit. Yeah, I said wait till next week. Wait till next week. Um, <laughs> all, all fifteen. TLC is next weekend, right? Oh my yeah. god. Oh my. We have a prediction no, episode yep. next week. Yeah. Oof, and we're back. Um, Raw didn't do anything. Yeah, literally nothing. <laughs> next week. And lastly, there for some reason this is the feud for the SmackDown Women's Title. It's Carmella and Sasha. They did a match last night where Carmella's Sasha gonna win it eventually. It's gonna I, happen. It, sadly, yes, because Sasha lost. I by know. DQ. Um, then, also, they have Carmella rebranded and right into the title picture. She's gonna win the belt. She's gonna win the belt. Carmella's sadly. blonde. Exactly. There you go. That's, 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 that's God. Imagine Carmella's how many championships blonde. I She's have. She's gonna win the belt. Justin, you would beat Ric Flair's record by now. Both of you guys probably would by now. Um, yeah. But no, yeah. It's, it's gonna, she's going to um, win at TLC, I think, if they put it on that. Yeah. If That's, she does, yeah. I, I just hope that by – I over. hope by Mania it's Bianca 
is I hope Bianca wins. Yeah. Or, honestly, I hope Bianca wins the women's rumble, but I think it'll probably be either Charlotte or Becky, whichever one's coming. I think back. it's Charlotte. I really but think it's Charlotte. Blonde, probably like Charlotte. We're talking about Blonde. exactly. Blonde, yep. And um, um, Charlotte versus Carmella at Mania. It's Vince's. That's Vince's dream right there. That dream right there. Jesus Christ. Um. Well, wow. We pounded through SmackDown quick. That was good. Uh, but that does it for this episode of the Department Podcast. I hope. Everyone enjoyed that as we recapped this week. And wrestling, make sure you guys subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Leave a like, a comment, um, everything. Leave a review, all that fun stuff. We like interacting with you guys, whether it's through the DMs or in our comments. So just interact with us. Make sure you guys follow us on our social medias on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook at department underscore pod. We have an NFL week 14 reaction video coming up or breakdown, whatever the hell you want to call it. That's coming up. We just did a baseball episode that's doing great again. You guys seem to love the baseball stuff. So keep wanting more baseball. We'll, we'll put more baseball out there. Um, So that's good. Uh, a, a, a basketball season preview coming up because the season Next week. really, really soon. Yeah, that's coming up. So that's big. Uh, there'll be a week 15 prediction then of course TLC predictions coming up too next week so stay tuned to all that fun stuff and we'll see you in the next episode